Okay, the next dial indicator I'm going to show you how to use has a vice grip or lock, locking plier base rather than a dial indicator. And this comes in handy anytime uh, you don't have something magnetic to stick a magnetic base dial indicator to. So this is kind of my second uh, favorite dial indicator and it's a distant second. Um, I'd much rather use the magnetic one. but So let's open up the box and see what we have. We have a piece of foam that goes over the dial indicator itself to hold it in place and keep it from vibrating when, when it's being transported. So I'm going to set that here in the lid. I don't want this set in oil or thrown away. It needs to be kept with the box itself. All right, we have some dial indicator extensions over here. It has the same dial indicator that was described and, and shown in the magnetic base dial indicator video that I have. We've got a one inch travel. We've got a outer dial that can be rotated uh, to zero the dial indicator and a little thumb screw that can lock it in place uh, right there to keep it from rotating. Um, once again, do not drop these. Be very careful with them. Uh, they're very expensive, but it's a precision tool. Um, it's made to last a very long time. All right, now the vice grip, and these are actual vice grip brand uh, vice grips here. Uh, this is the base for the dial indicator, and then it has a flexible arm here, and almost everybody hates these because they uh, have a hard time adjusting them and making the dial indicator uh, hold still while they take a measurement. So let me show you a few tricks I've learned uh, over the years in using this vice grip base uh, dial indicator. So the first thing is we need to pick a place to clamp the the dial indicator on the vehicle or the part that you're going to be measuring. So in this demonstration, I've got a cutaway front axle out of a Toyota Tundra, and I want to come in and measure the backlash on one tooth right there. So we need to find a position where we can clamp the vice grip and still have the flexible arm be able to hold the dial indicator in place and take a good measurement. So if I want my dial indicator to be approximately right here, then I better not put the clamp right next to it because the flexible mounting doesn't have that much flex. It needs to be farther away. So there are some fins here on the side of the differential housing. There's a big fin right here also. I'm thinking this fin right here on the top might be a good one to uh, clamp to. It's still pretty close though. Uh, let's see if there's a, a better place. There's a bolt. Yeah, there's a bolt right back here on the side of the differential housing that I'm going to clamp to. So I'm going to loosen the, the thumb screw on the end of the vice grip here, just enough that I can still come in and clamp, there we go, clamp those vice grips down in place. So I've got a good solid uh, connection there. Okay, the end of this flexible arm here has a threaded shaft on it right there, and we can thread that into this vice grip right here, right here, or right here. Um, I'm thinking in this case, here on this side will be the better location to screw that in. So I'm going to run that in by hand. And we need to thread that in all the way, just like that. And then it takes a 13 16 hand wrench 
to snug that up. Uh, 13 sixteenths is, a, is approximately the same as 21 millimeters. 21 is a little loose on it, but 21 will work also. So now we've got a good solid connection here. And then we've got this flexible arm. Well, this flexible arm just flops down in place. Um, and it has a clamp on the end of it right here where the dial indicator is going to go. Like this. But somehow we've got to keep this flexible arm from flexing once we get the dial indicator in place. So let me show you how to do that. And I'm going to take out the dial indicator because that's the most expensive part while I do this. So there's a red handle right here. And that handle connects to a cable. You can see the end of the cable. You can see the end of the cable right there. And as I turn this red knob, the cable gets longer and the cable gets shorter. Longer, shorter. So when we put it in the short position, that is when it's supposed to lock this uh, flexible arm and keep it from falling down. But obviously the, the cable's too long at this point. So on the other end of this flexible arm is another adjustable uh, thumb screw. right here. And if we turn this, that will take up the slack in that cable. You adjust this threaded thumb screw enough that when you tighten up the clamp lock over here, that it holds the arm from flopping around. Now, if it still flops down, then your cable's not tight enough. If you can't tighten up, if you can't turn this knob all the way and lock it in place and it keeps coming loose, then your cable is too loose. And if you extend the, the flexible arm out straight, that will have a different adjustment than if it's bent. Um, so it's, it's a little tricky to get adjusted uh, properly, which is why a lot of technicians hate this style of, of base. But once you understand, it's just a matter of adjusting the length of that cable so that the lock will hold it in place. See, I can have it extended out straight here, and it'll hold in place. I can have it tipping up, and it'll hold it in place. Um, you just have to adjust the cable to the right length for it to do that. So I'm going to loosen that up so that I can get the dial indicator back in it just like that I want you to notice I've got a little space on the top of the clamp and some space on the bottom where that shaft comes through we do not want to clamp or attempt to clamp on the the plunger itself all right, then we're going to position the dial indicator plunger onto the ring gear tooth at a 90 degree angle, just like we did in the magnetic base dial indicator video. So I'll put it down there on a the right angle. I'll tighten up the thumb screw to hold the dial indicator from moving, and then tighten up this red lever over here to hold the cable or this flexible arm in place. And now we're holding the dial indicator in place. Now this knob right here, as I, as I turned it, it just barely is holding that cable in place. So I'm going to tighten the cable up just a tiny bit more so that it has a better grip and put the dial indicator plunger back on the tooth where I want it. And then, that's better. Lock it in place. I've got a good solid 
uh, connection there. And then just like in the magnetic base dial indicator video that I have, uh, we are going to zero the dial indicator. So I've got the dial indicator zeroed. I've got the plunger sitting on a ring gear tooth at a 90 degree angle. I've got the dial indicator preloaded. So the plunger is sticking out of the top here some, indicating that it's preloaded. And now we're ready to take the same backlash measurement that we did before. We measured seven thousandths of an inch with the magnetic base dial indicator, and we're getting the same seven thousandths of an inch difference between the two readings. Looks like we go about maybe a negative half and a positive uh, six and a half or so, right around seven thousandths of an inch of backlash with a vice grip base dial indicator. So a little harder to use, but very handy when you don't have a magnetic um, or when you don't have a piece of uh, steel body or suspension to uh, connect it to. All right, when you are done using or when you're done taking your measurement and you're going to use this dial indicator again in, in the same day in my class, just loosen up the clamp on the dial indicator and set it back in the box, just like this with the dial indicator plunger sticking up. If you are done using this dial indicator for the day, disassemble the entire thing and put it back in the box using the protective foam over the dial indicator and put it back uh, in my precision tool toolbox.